continue with the twenty second chapter of the book of Yechezkel Vaidvar Adonai Leimor. Biata ben Adam atishpot atishpot et ir hadamim vodata mekol Torah bata. So mortal man, right? To judge, judge the city of bloodshed and declare all of her horrors, all of her abominations. Of course, referring there to Jerusalem. Who uh, all of the prophecies of uh, Yechezkel up to this time have basically been about God leaving Jerusalem, going towards Babel, his Merkava, his chariot, and the destruction that's going to happen. God says the city who's in, who's in, in his whose midst is bloodshed. Your time is coming. You have become too impure. You have become, in a sense, the idea the idols that I um, prohibit. You're guilty for the blood you shed, for the idolatry, right? Uh, this, this is what you've done. And therefore, I will make a mockery out of you. We've seen this before in the book of Yechezkel. You will be, when somebody wants to talk about uh, a place that the greatest horrors happened to, they won't talk about the destruction of Egypt, the destruction of Rome, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They'll talk about the destruction of Jerusalem. Both the near and the far will scorn you. They'll besmirch your name, you who is full of evil and iniquity. Hine, we're in verse six. Nisiyeh Yisraeli Shlizaro Hayuvach Leman Shvach Dam. Every one of the princes of Israel in your midst uses strength, but not to save, not to defend, but to shed blood. Abba Aim He Kalu Bach Lagera Suba Oshek Betochechi Atom Almana Honuvach. Fathers and mothers have been humiliated. Strangers have been cheated. Orphans and widows have been wronged within you. This is why I create a society, a society that should be just, where children are honoring, respecting their parents, where the uh, the the orphan and the widow is respected, and and you have done just the opposite. Kadashai, we're in verse eight. Bazit hilalt. You have despised my holy places, my mikdash, my sanctuary. And you have profaned my Shabbat. There were tail bearers in your midst. In order not just to say something bad about something, but to go and to cause the, the death, the killing. And on the mountains, you have practiced horrors, depravity, things that are zima, things that are that are horrible. Ervatav gilavach timat timeat hamida inuvach. You have uncovered your father's nakedness, incest. You have violated women during their menstrual impurity. And interestingly, this uh, this is the uh, Haftor for Parshat Acharemot. We usually don't read it because of the time of year and, and where Acharemot ends up. And so oftentimes together with Kedoshim. But this is in Parshat Acharemot is, is one of the places, the main place in the Torah, where it talks about the taboo prohibited relationships. The Ish. At Eishet Reihu Asato Evav Eishet Kalototi Mevzima Vish Tacho Tova Tavivi Neavach More of them, right? You slept with other men's wives and their and your own daughters-in-law and violated their own sisters, the daughters they you you seduced and and uh, you know uh, other family members. Shochad Lachuvach you took bribes. Levan Shvochdam in order to spill blood. Neshach V'Tarbit Lakachta you took interest. The Tatsi Reach Ba Oshech and you defrauded others Foti Shachacht the Uma Dimailohim and you with all of your stratums of all of your plans, all of your things that you were able to think up and conspire, you forgot me, says God Vihine. We're in verse thirteen, Pasukud Gimel. Peti Chapi. I will strike my hand. We had that yesterday. We talked about the kaf el kaf, not the clapping of hands, but striking the hand, God, one against the, the other. He tells first he has come to do it and then does it himself. El bit eich asher asit. I'm going to smack my hands together for your ill-gotten gains and the bloodshed that you have committed. Will your will your lave? Will your lave here doesn't mean the heart or the mind. It means it means probably your courage. Will your strength? 
right? That yesterday talked about it's, things are going to be so horrible that everybody's courage and strength is going to melt. So will your strength endure? Will you? Will your hands remain chazak? Will they mean strong in the days to come when I'm going to do that which I said when I'm bringing bring this horror to Jerusalem? I will scatter you amongst the nations. You will disperse throughout the lands. I will consume the impurity out of you. You will be, you will be interesting. Uh, how do how we understand Usually, it's like the word nachala, which means your uh, one's uh, portion. Um, uh, Rashi and others claim that it comes from the word whole, like to profane. So it's in a. So you will be profaned in the eyes of the the uh, nations. Your reputation will be harmed, and then you know will know that I am God. One of the rights we've talked about the back and forth. Generally, in this book up to this point, it's been you'll know God through the destruction. That's what God tells you. That's not going to happen here. We had had some chapters, not yesterday, but two days ago, three days ago, which talked about eventually Ben Israel's return, the return of those who are in Bavel, and therefore you'll know that God exists as well. So verse 18, mortal man, second prophecy of this chapter, the house of Israel has become, they become uh, uh, dross to me, right? They're, they're, they're all copper and tin and iron and lead. And in the crucible, however, they'll turn into silver. Because you went into the what's called in other places the kur habarzel. Right here, it talks about being, you know, being uh, brought into the crucible. It's called the word kur. Other places, it's called in regard to Egypt the kur habarzel. You went into the the iron furnace. You went into the furnace and and. And uh, you managed to survive. Those of you who survived because you were strong, you were pure, you were righteous, those of you will be brought back to Jerusalem. So exactly what we talked about in the last number of chapters where we had the reversal. Here we have the reversal again. Just as silver and copper and iron and lead and tin are gathered into the crucible, and fire is blown into them so as to melt them down. <clears throat> so will I will gather you in my anger into this fire and melt you, right? So this is what God is saying here. And it's one thing, you know, when you stub your toe, it's something else when God says, in order to reform B'nai Israel, I need to get rid of the wicked. I need to cause a tremendous amount of destruction. It's a lot more horrific, a lot more difficult to hear, especially these days. I'm not saying that God is, God's uh, um, involvement in the horrors of Hamas. I'm not, don't make that uh, connection there. <speaking in Hebrew> I'll gather you and will blow upon you the fire of my anger and you shall be melted in it. <speaking in Hebrew> Just as silver is melted in the kur, in the crucible, so you will be melted in it, and this way you will know that I am God. I poured out my fury over you. But here again, at least at this point, the fury is supposed to be for the return. The angels will once again be the silver. They will be able to to return. That's a, a concept. There's difficulty brought up in the in the Talmud. This idea of yisurim shel ahava, when God pings you, uh, makes you, we'll say, stub your toe. Stubby toes can hurt, but stubby toe is uh, nothing compared to other things that happen, the things that are described in these chapters, horrors that we know from the world, in order for you to think about your behavior and improve your your life, your morals, your behaviors, your ethics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we see some of that is coming in here. Here it's in a much more horrific fashion. We've seen it before in the book, of course, of God saying the destruction is going to happen so you can return. But he and I lie, lay more. Now, verse 24, Ben Adam and Morla at Eretz lo God said, saying in a sense to Israel, you're an unpure land. You're not Tahor. There's not going to be any rain that's going to wash away the horrors. 
I can't think of it. Uh, uh, snow. And then, the, you know, the snow sticks around. The animals go and they uh, pee on the snow and whatnot. You want the, that? You want the snow again? You want it to be taken care of? God says the horrors, the blood that's there, it's going to remain. The prophets are like roaring lions, rending prey. Right? They're supposed to be prophets. Supposed to be telling you. Supposed to be reforming your behavior but they're causing you to become prey. They devour human beings. They seize treasure and wealth. They have widowed many women in her midst. The prophets are profane. Koanach, Hamsu, worst insult you can give to somebody today. Her priests have violated Torah, my teaching. They've gone against it. And they've profaned that which is sacred, mixing up that which is holy and that which is profane. Loivdilu, they didn't separate. Right? We know this first bracha in the morning, right? To Avdala at the end of uh, at the end of uh, Shabbat, Amavdu Ben Kodesh Lachol. First bracha in the morning. Uh, we're talking about the rooster, which knows the difference between uh, day and night. So much of Judaism is trying to figure out what's good, what's bad, what should be categorized this way, what should be categorized that way, and your uh, Kohanim have not been doing that. And I don't think God's saying it's due to a lack of knowledge. They, they did right, so they closed their eyes to my Shabbat and they profaned me. I'm profane. The officials, the leaders are like wolves um, uh, causing prey. In order to spill blood. Why are they doing it? To bribe for ill-gotten gains. Prophets, too, they daub the wall with plaster. They prophesy falsely. They say, this is what God said. God said, that's not what I said. Amaaretz Ashku and the people of the land have practiced. Oshek, the gazlu, gazel, the aniv, avyon, honu, vetager, ashku, blo, mishpat, the average person. What did they do? Robbed. Fraud. They take advantage of the poor, of the needy, of the stranger, the people who can't stand up for themselves. And I sought amongst them a person to stand up and to tell them what they're doing wrong, to stand in literally in the breach, and to scream and to shout from the rooftops and to reform their behavior, and I didn't find it. Now, God tried. So was it, there was a lack of person. I'm pretty sure that Yeshaya screamed it, and Amos screamed it, and Micha screamed it, and Yirmiyahu screamed it during this time period. But but God didn't find that person. And maybe there's a little bit of, God sent Yirmiyahu, but God was waiting, seeing if somebody on their own initiative would do it. And it's very much like, think of stone. We go back to the beginning of the book of Yeshaya, where Yeshaya says, Kestom hayinu, damini. You are like Sodom and Gomorrah. And you're, there's nobody who stood up. There's nobody who stopped it. They're not any righteous people. I have therefore poured out my anger upon them. I will consume them with fire. And I will repay them for their conduct. These are the words of God. So a very, very difficult and very challenging chapter. The beginning and the end, the middle has some uh, decency, but we see there more than we've seen. We've seen little snippets of it. Uh, we always see idolatry. We've seen uh, uh, snippets and then uh, a lot of pieces actually in this book, more than the preceding two books, um, the profaning of Shabbat. But here we really see every sin that was committed by the people in Yerushalayim. Murder, uh, illicit relationships, some of them might have been through rape and seduction, uh, bribery, misleading, lying, everything that can be imagined. And thus as a result, going back to like when we talked about Shiloh, back in the beginning of the book of Shemuel, when God decides to destroy the temple at Shiloh, sometimes you can fix something, and sometimes something is so corrupt and so horrific it needs to be destroyed in order to start over. And that's God's decision here about Yerushalayim. We're going to destroy it. We're going to, we're going to throw it into to the fire. It's going to burn. 
and only the few things that can come out from that fire pure, like good, a beautiful piece of silver or whatever it might be, that is going to be who's going to return to Jerusalem in time.